Welcome by the Orchid Saga. My name is Elkion Wiesma and I am an orchid grower from the Netherlands. And this video I basically should have done way earlier. But uh, I don't know why, but it didn't happen yet. But now it is, because uh, today we're finally going to talk about uh, how I give my orchids a winter rest while I have them in uh, self-watering. So um, that is something that I found very difficult to understand when I start growing my orchids in a semi-hydroponic uh, environment. In most cases in my, I refer to it as self-watering, but it's basically the, the same. So because in that case, if you grow them sem semi-hydroponically, they are always in a very wet environment. And one of the first things we learn when we start growing orchids uh, is that you, you don't want to keep too wet or roots will rot etc and yes that is true uh, if you grow them uh, in organic uh, media but if you do grow them in inorganic media like I do in my case most of the time it's pumice uh, the media will not rot of course and also I uh, did learn after a few years that the orchids are able able to uh, grow uh, water roots so they will change the structure of the roots uh, if they have to and uh, make them basically suitable for the new environment. So most of the times we get our orchids uh, in bark or spectrum moss, we take them out and we will let them adapt to a completely new system. And that is in my case, like I said, called self-watering system. But then the orchid still needs a winter rest. Uh, or it goes into dormancy, which basically for me is, is the same. It's technically uh, something different, but uh, uh, care-wise it means the same, because it just means that they have a rest period where they uh, don't need uh, any feed. Most of the growers will say they also don't need any water because they are not growing. But like, we just, uh, like I just explained, is that these orchids did adapt to a system, an environment that is very wet and moist. So they have water roots. And how do we keep the water roots uh, throughout that uh, winter rest? Um, it might sound very easy, but it's, for me, like I said, it, I, I found it kind of difficult to get a hang of. But yeah, water roots need to stay wet or at least damp to survive a few weeks, a few months in a uh, resting dormancy period of time. But it is doable, so you will not rot the orchid, you will keep the roots alive. But you kind of need to work with uh, what is your plant telling you. And that's the biggest advice I ever did get, is look at your plants. It's not uh, a, a date in your calendar. Uh, when you start uh, giving them a rest, no, it's just when the orchid needs the rest. And if it doesn't need a rest, it probably needs some fertilizer, it needs a little bit more water maybe uh, to grow or to, can, to continue the, the flower spikes, for example. So that is basically what I'm trying to tell you guys uh, today. Uh, which plants need what? What are the signs? I'm going to talk about a little bit and how I do the actual winter rest. So let's, uh, let's do that. Well, um, first of all, let me explain. I have three types of orchids that need a rest. Uh, first of all are the cat catacidum types. You probably did see them already in the background here. But also this one. This one is a, a Lycasta orchid and I have two of them. One here, one here. I have four uh, catacidum types. Two of them are hanging here. The other two are already starting their winter rest, so I will uh, film them uh, later on. And we have, or I have, the dendrobium types. And there are a few other types, but mostly the uh, nobly types need a winter rest. So we are going to talk about them. The catacidum types, lacaste, and the dendrobiums. So let's start with the catacidums, because we are already there. I'm going to take this plant for an example for the signs. What to look for? Well, I hope you already see some signs. What is the plant telling you? Besides, or not besides, it is uh, dropping its leaves, but it still has some foliage on, a bit, little bit of green here. This one is already, this is a good example. It has basically all the colors, <laughs> green, yellow, and brown. So this is one is going over as well. And it still has a beautiful spike, blooms, but, 
it had another spike that is going over and that one is dropping the blooms so i'm just waiting a little second so to give you a bit of time to think about it but yeah if you um I think you see that this one is going into dormancy because that is basically what the plant is telling you. It stops growing, it's dropping its leaves, it's dropping its flower spikes. And if uh, it does that, it will uh, leave you with basically nothing else than the bulbs. So then the, this one is in dormancy, so it doesn't need anything. Uh, most Arcus growers would say, but like I explained in the beginning, this one has also water roots. Um, let me take it out. Well, actually, I'm going to take the one that is in dormancy. That's a better example, I think. So let's say we keep this uh, one a little bit growing. This one is still getting a bit of fertilizer because it has the blooms, but I'm slowing it down that I should uh, add to this one. But I have an example here. Let me grab this very quickly. And here we are. So this is a, uh, how a uh, catechism type looks when it's in a dormant state. We have an old flower spike, could cut it off. Didn't do this uh, yet, but I will. So let's, uh, let me get that one out of the pot. Whoops, almost, almost, almost. Mm, yeah, <laughs> there it comes. It's fairly heavy actually, but you can see we have still beautiful roots. Here and there, not much in this case, but here and there we may have an older root. That is because I don't repot them if they don't need it. So every new growth makes new roots and those roots will be added in this pot as well. But I leave the older ones as, as long as they are very nice. Whoops, there goes the tag. <laughs> very nice and white color wise. I don't see the point in cutting them off. Some growers do, some do take them completely out of the pot take the root systems off, put them aside and uh, just watch if there is a new growth starting and it, if, is, if there is a new growth starting they will put them, put them up again. Like I said, I don't do it because I just can't. These roots are alive, you can uh, um, keep them alive for at least another year. I think I have even all the roots in there, I'm not completely sure, but this one has quite a, a lot of them. And I think, because I never did take it out, and this is the, uh, I grow this for two years, and this is the third time that I am giving it a winter rest. So yeah, I think we have some other roots as well. And I'm going to show you the reservoir. There it is. A little bit of water. So I don't give it, as much water as I do when it is growing. Let me point it out a little bit better. This is about the reservoir uh, filled with water, which it does get when it's fully growing. Um, so because then the, it needs more water, it needs way more fertilizer, because um, when it's dormant, it doesn't need to fertilize. So I don't give them anything, just only RO water. I don't pH it down. And in just a little bit, we just saw the amount of water. Well, it's not even making a reservoir, basically. So I let it kind of dry, uh, be way drier, but still damp. I hope that makes sense. I, it's still kind of, yeah, damp uh, inside of the pot. Hard to describe, but that's basically what's, uh, what's happening here. And I keep my eye on it. Most of the times I need to put a little bit of water in every week. But like I said, I just keep an eye on them. If I check them, uh, if I want to, and uh, then I give them a little bit of water if, if needed. But this one doesn't need water because it has still some water in, in, uh, in the reservoir. And that's enough. So that's what I do. I don't let them dry up completely because otherwise I will lose the water roots. And that's not what we want. So I hope this does make, does make sense. And also what I do when they start growing, when I see new um, growths appear, I will put them on this wall. This is uh, this uh, greenhouse is southwest facing, and they do get a fair a bit uh, amount of light here, and they really like it when they start growing. And you can see I did bloom all four of them, so they are all four somewhere in updates. If I uh, if I have some room, I will uh, show some uh, pictures of the flowers. 
but I did a bloom and this I only have four and this is the first year that I did bloom all four of them so I think there's something going right th because they uh, did bloom uh, and you can also see that the bulbs this is from last year well actually this is from two years back we just started a new year this is from last year and you can see it's bigger than before so that's a good sign as well so that's basically the winter rest. So let me put it down for the catechism types here on the floor. Uh, like I said, um, in summer I give them more fertilizer, but the very important thing is, and that's exactly the same uh, with any other grower, is once these guys, the catechism, start a new growth, you don't want to fertilize it too soon because then you will also lose the, the roots, especially the new roots, because those are not there yet. They need to be a fairly, uh, fairly long, so almost touching the bottom of the pot before you even think about fertilizing it. Normally, you would hear, don't water them. Well, in this case, because we have the water roots, we keep it damp, but that's it. Even with new roots, with new roots, I keep it damp, but I don't fertilize. I just let those roots find their way, and when I think, well, we, they are now reaching the bottom of the pot, or the, the growth is fairly big, then I start to fertilize uh, the plant. In some cases, a little bit earlier, and that's another sign, because then in that case I see the bulbs shrivel. So if it starts a new growth and these bulbs start to shrivel, I feed it a little bit, because then they need a little bit more feed. They ha apparently do not have uh, uh, enough reserves to get that uh, growth to grow nicely. So they are showing you signs that they need a little bit of more fertilizer. More fertilizer, I should say. So that's when, uh, when the bulbs start to shrivel. Um, if you do not grow them uh, in self-watering, they can also start to shrivel when they just need a little bit of water. But once again, we always have some water in there. So I don't have shriveling uh, because they just need a little bit of water. They start to shrivel uh, sometimes when they have new growths, like I said, so they need a little bit of feed. So once you get the hang of it, um, you start to notice the signs, and that's beautiful. It makes me... Um, so, I, 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 yeah, I, li I like growing my orchids even more and more because of that experience. I, you, it's really uh, a sort of almost a, a, like a, a language of the plants. I look at it like that because it's, it's, it's fascinating me. I hope uh, <laughs> that is obvious. Um, so it makes me really happy. It's such a nice hobby. So those little signs and to understand the signs and to work with the plants, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And uh, yeah, that's obviously why it, this is a hobby, of course. So uh, that is about the catechism types. The Lycasta are basically the same. The only uh, difference is, is that I feed them a little bit uh, less. So I did forget to mention the amount in summer, I, uh, I, I uh, remember. So in summer, they got, they, these guys get, do get the same uh, amount of fertilizer as my fan does. And it's about 300 parts per million when they really are growing. So I slowly build it up. Once I start watering and the roots of that new growth are big enough, I start with 50 parts. Next week, 100. Next week, 150. Up to 300. And let them really grow and get really big bulbs. And once they are finished growing, they have their leaves at their biggest. They are the bulb is really uh, fattened up, and you start you see to sh you see to start uh, the start of a new flower spike or two. Then it's time for me to slow down a little bit. I still fertilize them, but I go down to up to 200, I think. And once it has a fully grown spike and it has about two or three three blooms open. That's a sign that I'm even going to lower the fertilizer even more. So th at that point I'm at 200 and I will slowly, a couple of weeks, go to 100 uh, and then 50. And these guys, this one does get 50 parts per million still because it still is maintaining some blooms. So it needs a little bit of fertilizer. Maybe one week or two weeks I will give it just RO water. And then I think this one has lost the leaves and the blooms. And then I'm back at a zero parts per million because that one wants to go to sleep. So I hope that uh, did make sense. I almost did forget, but um, now we go to the Lacaste, or Lacaste, uh, which is basically the same. I only do uh, not fertilize them as much as these guys. 
Um, but these are, this is the, yes, for this one is it the second time that I uh, give this a uh, dormant C, but you can see this one is obviously telling me something. Look at those beautiful long green leaves, the blooms. And this side is the same. We have working with two growths this year. So yeah, this one obviously does get fertilizer because this one is growing. It uh, needs to maintain these leaves. It's making new flower spikes. The brown flower spikes were from a few months back, or one month back, something like that. So it has now in total eight spikes. And so therefore it needs a, uh, it needs the feed. So I'm not sure when I will put this one to rest because um, it's not thinking about uh, the uh, winter rest yet. Uh, which is fairly obviously, I think. But uh, once again, this plant will tell me. Once it stops blooming, once, once it starts to uh, let those uh, leaves get yellow, then I know I need to slow down on the fertilizer. This gets the same amount of fertilizer as basically the rest of my orchids, which is in winter around, whoops, I'm sorry, that was a tripod, which is uh, around 50 parts per million. I don't fertilize my uh, orchids much because I don't think uh, that suits them very well. I'm a strong believer of uh, a small amount of fertilizer every single time. So that's why I keep it very low. Plus I do not flush and this way I do not get uh, salt built up because I have, I think a nice uh, ratio to work with. These uh, are still growing, they can bloom, they can make beautiful structures. And uh, because they have the fertilizer, not much, but enough to maintain uh, the blooming and the growing. I hope that does make sense. But as usual, you can always ask questions. I try to explain this as well as I can, but uh, yeah. So yeah, this one is, uh, like I said, telling me that it's not even thinking about sleeping yet, even though we are already in January. But this one doesn't give a, you know what? <laughs> Let's grab this one. This is also a Lacaste. Like Caste. And this is the red one that I did bought, yes, in 2022. So this is the first rest that I'm giving it. And you can see the bulbs are uh, green and black. I didn't do uh, as good as with the other one. Um, and it, this one was very strong. It has quite some new growth, but I think it's my, uh, my, uh, my bet because I did start to fertilize this too, too, uh, too quickly. It just was starting uh, with those new growths and I saw new roots and I thought, well, this is the time, but I didn't wait for the, the new roots to really settle in. So I start to uh, fill up that reservoir and try to pump in the fertilizer to make it big, strong and healthy blooms, which is always, well, basically always the case if something goes wrong with the winter rest, we try to uh, put in too much water, too much fertilizer, and with orchids you really need to learn to wait and to look at your plants, of course, but really uh, look what was happening. This one wasn't shriveling at all, but still I thought I, it had several new growths, I think about seven, but I think I have two left. <laughs> the rest I did uh, manage to uh, let rot off. So yeah, it's, it's, it's completely my fault. I don't think this plant is sick. Could be, but I don't think so. I think I was just uh, just uh, giving it uh, too much water and too much fertilizer too soon. So yeah, it has some leaves, but that's it. Luckily, it has these two. These are fairly fairly nice size, so it can photos photosynthesize because these leaves are not looking very healthy. So I hope there is enough strength within this plant to start uh, new um, growths in next season. So it probably will uh, drop those leaves within a few weeks and then we will give it a rest. And then, uh, then I hope I didn't kill it, but I think it will survive, but you can see the bulbs are not, uh, not looking out. So even though I have some experience with these guys, I know it's, I think we all, well, a lot of us have that problem. I think you see all those, the flower spikes, the new growths, and you want to put in the fertilizer way too much. No, don't do it because they don't need it. And this plant wasn't telling me it needed fertilizer because it, do, it was doing well, it was growing well. It had no shrivel bulbs whatsoever. And still I didn't listen because in my mind it needed to be fat to grow. And 
So yeah, I learned my lesson again. And then, uh, <laughs> well, this is basically the same actually. I'm sorry, I, uh, I will um, show you the place where I did to give them a, these guys a winter rest. And I will put these guys next to, uh, to them. But before we uh, do that, because um, I have this one here, we will also have a look at where these guys live. So we will do that in a minute. But look at this. This one is so beautiful. And it's not very warm today and very light. So, well, it's actually a dead leaf. <laughs> so it isn't as fragrant as it can be, but this one has a beautiful fragrance. This is the Nobly Spring Dream Apollon. Maybe you did recognize it, it's a very common one. And this is basically the same story as with the other plants. Again, look at your uh, orchids. Uh, what are they telling you? Well, this one is getting back to strength, I believe. These canes are getting are bigger. But you can see the previous one are fairly small. And that's my fault because I back in the days I didn't um, know how to give this a proper winter rest. Plus, I was dealing with my pH problem. So uh, yeah, this one has been through, through a lot, but it's still here. And I think that is why these leaves, they started to yellow up while they just were maturing. So that was way too soon. There's a little bit of green on them, but it was way too soon. So that's, it's not completely healthy yet, but it does have quite some blooms in comparison to previous years. I think I had maybe two or three clusters of blooms. I call these a cluster, <laughs> but it has now way more already. It has even more buds here. So I think we are doing better. Plus it did lose her root system. And let's have a look. This is actually a uh, small pumice, very sm No, not small pumice, small lecca, I'm sorry. But whoops. Yes, the roots, most of the roots are on the other side, of course. <laughs> Make it a little bit easier, but you can see here, I never had so many roots on this one. I kept losing them because I kept that reservoir way too wet. So not, not a bit of water, but I just keep, keep, kept it filled, completely filled up. And um, maybe, I'm not completely sure, maybe I did have too much fertilizer in it. I'm not sure, but I, yeah, I had it way too wet like this and now it, it now this one is obviously getting uh, fed again, so I have uh, normally uh, just a uh, quite a nice high reservoir. But in winter, just a little bit, just uh, the same as the other ones. The only difference is the care, because these guys do not need as much fertilizer, uh, especially in summer, as the Cadicidum types do. So that's the main difference. But the winter rest itself is, is the same uh, process. If I see that they, uh, these guys are telling me that they want to uh, go to sleep, I will st stop uh, with the fertilizer and slowly, uh, gradually uh, give them a little bit less water in the reservoir. I look at the roots if we don't have any growing tips or anything, because if it has growing tips, it's still uh, growing, even though it might look like sleeping on the, up, uh, the upper side of the pot, <laughs> above the pot. Inside the pot, it can still be growing. Not that I will give it then much fertilizer if I see root tips, but still, I can have a little bit uh, fertilizer in there, if that does make sense. But I mostly look at these guys, and yeah, you probably know, and um, well, and I think this one was in November, last November, it started to uh, start the winter rest, and it was, I think, only three weeks, seriously, guys, when it already started to make these buds. So I was like, okay, that was a quick, uh, quick sleep. <laughs> and, and you will see the difference in a minute when I show the other ones, because this one is almost fully in bloom. It was so quick out of the winter rest. Well, okay, once again, I'm looking at my plant. If I would look at the calendar, I would say, well, it's not a time, so I don't fertilize it, etc. Yeah, that's not, not me. I think uh, we just, like I said, uh, need to look at the plants. And this one needs to feed because it has some blooms to, uh, to make and now to maintain. And still some buds there. So yeah, it can use the fertilizer. So I hope this did make sense. I'm going to uh, grab the camera now and I'm going to show you the places where I have these guys and where I do get, uh, give my uh, Cadicidum types a winter rest in the Lercasta, of course. So uh, let's do that. 
So one more time and look at it so you can see now a bit better that I have my vendors here because these need the most light and I think now it makes sense that I have them on this wall. The catacidums and the lacaster because they need the light as well, especially when they are growing. When they are resting, I have them down here in this corner where they still get a amount of light. I have artificial light, a little bit of daylight, but it's way cooler here. And so far, uh, they do react very well to that uh, to this spot. They really uh, take their winter rest when needed and they start perfectly growing again. So I think this is a nice spot to give them a winter rest. And the funny thing is, <laughs> maybe you did already notice that this probably doesn't make sense because I was talking about the signs of the plant and now this one I'm showing in a winter rest area <laughs> of the greenhouse and this one has still the leaves on. Yeah, this one is not dropping the leaves. I don't know why, but it had bloomed and here as you can see and it still kept those leaves but I uh, was like yeah I'm sorry but you need a winter rest and this is new for me so I'm not completely sure what the sign of this plant is at the moment I uh, maybe it will lose the leaves eventually or this is maybe one that can keep the leaves on and start a new growth I'm not sure or maybe this one is, is it's too warm in the greenhouse. Well, actually, I don't have it that warm, to be honest. And you can see this one is responding as uh, was to be expected. But yeah, this one keeps the, keeps the leaves. But still, I will give them a cool down, a bit of winter uh, rest. This one is just cutting our, our, our water. And let me show it to you guys because I just noticed. Oops, I'm sorry. I just This is a little bit easier for me to film. Let me... Uh, Zoom in, I hope. Just next to the water. Yeah, there it is. You can see it. A green pointy thing. So I think this is the new growth already. I'm sorry for the shaking because it's very hard when you to keep it still when you zoomed in. But you can now see it. <laughs> so yeah. Also, uh, two weeks on this lower shelf here. And already it starts with new growth. So this is, uh, maybe it's an overachiever. <laughs> I'm not sure. But I'm let it be and I will soon put it back on the, on the wall because this one is telling me that it's not in a mood for a rest. It likes it, it wants to grow again. <laughs> so I will, uh, will let it, I will let it be and we will see, I'll see what, uh, what happens. And this one is uh, basically the opposite. He's tell he's or she is telling me that it wants uh, to sleep while actually it's already sleeping. But no new growth yet. This Two, I did put uh, to rest at the same time. So uh, uh, both of them are in, in fully rest now for two weeks. So, uh, yeah. But this, uh, like I said, this is the corner where I put them because it's a bit cooler here. And Eli Castell will uh, join you next to, next to them or in that corner when they are ready to have their winter rest. So that's for the, uh, these two types. Let's uh, get over to the dendrobiums. And before I do, here's my tripod. <laughs> we have this big one here. Well, first, when I did, uh, did uh, have bought it, <laughs> always afterwards, I did look up the information about the plant itself, of course. That's how it goes. We first buy it and then it's like, how do we take care of it? <laughs> Well, you can see that I'm talking about these, this one with the trinormous long canes. This is my Dendrobium chrysanthemum orange. I found on the internet that this one uh, likes to have a rest as well. Well, look in the middle, there is, it's a very big new growth already. So once again, this plant is telling me that it doesn't want a winter rest. It actually never ever did get a winter rest. It always does this, just around uh, when it starts blooming, it also starts a new growth, and that growth keeps on uh, growing uh, du during winter in my case. Maybe, maybe, I'm not sure, maybe it comes originally from a place where it is in winter colder than uh, I have it in my greenhouse, which makes it stop growing, and it will start to grow again. Uh, it starts to regrow that uh, new growth when it starts to get warm up. Maybe that's the case, and I ha don't have it as cold here, so it keeps on growing. That could be the case. 
but otherwise I have no explanation for it. But once again, I, I, I just didn't know what I, I did know what to do because I, uh, the plant is telling me it's very. Once you get a hang of it, it's not that hard to figure it out. I think. But really try to understand the plants. Well, that was for that dendrobium. Let's get over here. The side of the. And still, we have still quite wet water. Uh, uh, weather. <laughs> here in the corner, you probably recognize the blooms. Here it is. Here in this, on this shelf, I have my nobly type dendrobiums. And as you can see, the other ones are fairly green still. We have some nubbins there. Let me zoom in. So this one is also starting to think about blooming. This one, whoops, this one next to it, it's the rainbow dance. It's not making, oh, does it? Um, let me look closer. I didn't, no, it's not. It's not making nubbins or anything yet. But this one is the fire dust firebird, a stardust firebird, I'm sorry. You can see that one is also preparing for blooming. And like I said earlier, this one is really ahead of anybody here in this corner. This is almost in fully bloom. So this one, yeah, two weeks and it started to make the buds already. But that's okay. Plant is telling me it's ready, so it's ready. And then next to it we have here, this is my prima donna, and this one is also, I hope you can see them, starting with the buds already. But this one didn't get a winter rest at all because of this new growth. Same story as my chrysanthemum. Last year it had a winter rest because it had no new growth growing. This year it just kept on growing this growth, so it needed some fertilizer. So I hope these examples make it a little bit easier, at least to understand how I care for them with the, uh, with the winter rest. These are the nobly types. And I have here my Lindley eye. This one I'm giving a little bit more light, at least I try to. It doesn't look it on, uh, on camera because I have the artificial lights uh, about, uh, above the nobles, but this one gets actually more daylight. But my camera makes it a little bit darker. Let me lift this and you can see we talked about root tips. Well, this one has obviously some root tips there. So yeah, this one, there, it, there is something, at least something growing. But for me, it's not enough to start fertilizing it very much because above the pot, there's not much happening here. Oh, my wire of, what's that? Yeah, I'm stuck here. <laughs> Look at this. Whoops, I'm sorry. That's my microphone wire. There we go. I'm <laughs> It happens, it happens. But you can see this one is doing not much here yet. This is an old flower spike. I should turn it around. Let me do that very quickly. This one, there's a brown, but it's an old spike. And I don't see new spikes yet on these new growths. So it's not trying to bloom yet, but still it has some roots growing. So I, uh, this one did slow down a little bit. But I still give it a, a bit of fertilized water, 15 parts per million, because it's still growing roots and not completely uh, shut down. <laughs> so yeah, that's the difference. If there really, if there is nothing growing, just pure or all water, and that's it, just a little bit. This one has a still a fully a reservoir with some fertilizer, because like I said, I have some root tips there. Yeah, that's not a sign that it needs much fertilizer, but just a little bit. I hope that does make sense. If it's growing really big structures like canes, then it obviously needs just more fertilizer. More water, a fully reservoir, and so it can eat and take up whatever it needs to uh, grow that beautiful cane. So yeah, that may have been quite some information. I, I, I hope I didn't overdo it, but I really tried to talk about all the signs and hints and uh, that plants are giving us and how I uh, yeah, react to them, how I give my uh, plants that needed a winter rest uh, when they ask for it. 
obviously different growers, different methods, but I hope this uh, makes you at least uh, understand that you don't have to lose your roots, even though everybody says that they need a winter rest. Not everybody, because I know, I, I, if I'm correct, Nina does the, basically the same. Uh, we don't cut up the roots if not necessary, but most of them, uh, most of the growers, because they are grow with uh, organic media, it's just a different approach. And most of the cases, they don't, they don't do self-watering. But if you do, just always remember that these plants have water roots and that makes the whole uh, a lot of a difference. So you will keep it damp. Well, that's it, you guys. And of course, as usual, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. For now, I just, uh, like I said, I hope this uh, video finds you guys well. I hope you are all are doing well. And just uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the great comments and the likes and subscribes. It really, really uh, makes me uh, very uh, happy, of course, and I'm really looking forward to making uh, new videos. So thank you all, and I hope to see you at the next one. Bye-bye.